In 2013, an article surfaced revealing details about an internal initiative at Square Enix called RPG Juku. This article carried the rather sensational title, Square Enix forces all staff to play Super Mario RPG in order to learn how to make good RPGs again. Developers were given three days to complete the game, and then give opinions about its design. They listed the unique battle system, fun minigames, and environments as positives. Reportedly, one employee was fired for saying he liked, quote, the ease of going from point A to point B on the world map. Indeed, the claims in the article may appear dubious, and that's because they are. This article was written as a joke. It was initially published on a satirical gaming website, p4rgaming.com. Regardless of whether this article is truth or fiction, it reminds us of an ostensibly better time in the good old days of gaming. If this article resonates with you, then you may feel as if the RPG genre and its major developers have stumbled in recent times, but you can still remember fondly the feeling of being immersed in a great RPG in childhood. For me, Super Mario RPG is that game, one so flawless, immersive, and self-assured that it remains my favorite RPG of all time. What is it about the game's storytelling, mechanical design, and level design that continues to charm the cold, calloused hearts of gamers, even 20 years after its release? In this multi-part analysis, we'll take a close look at the major elements of Super Mario RPG's game design. We'll piece together exactly what earned the game its universal praise upon release, as well as the heartfelt love that the game's fans still hold strongly today. This is part one of the analysis, and fittingly, we're going to first talk about the most prominent aspect of the game, its battle system. In my eyes, the beauty of Mario RPG's battle system is that it incorporates the action elements we recognize from past Mario titles, while still retaining the flow and feel of traditional RPG battles. The crowning achievement here is the timed hits mechanic, as described by the game's co-director. That was very much inspired by a children's toy that was available in Japan at the time. It was like a large laptop with these buttons that would play music. You had to press the buttons with good timing to the music. It was that idea, having gameplay built around timing button presses, that inspired me to hybridize these two genres of game, to get a little bit of action and RPG into the same game. The timed hits mechanic keeps the player engaged in every single phase of a fight. To produce a timed hit, you have to watch your character's attack animation and press a face button at exactly the right moment. A successful timed hit, depending on how well you timed it, can deal either 1.5 or 2 times your base attack damage. In other words, timed hits allow you to deal double damage with physical attacks. Tying character animation to a fundamental game mechanic like timed hits is immersive, because Mario's hammer swing is no longer just eye candy. It's a miniature puzzle that you have to figure out and respond to each time you attack, and it's immensely satisfying to see and hear a successful timed hit deal damage. Furthermore, each weapon's timing is unique, so the longer you stick with a weapon, the better you'll be at perfecting your timed hits. Of course, you'll also want to upgrade your weapons periodically, which creates a whole new set of timing puzzles for you to solve. And here's the real genius of timed hits. As you get better at controlling your attacks, you're rewarded in real time with increased combat ability. Unlike traditional RPGs, your potential damage is not hard-coded by your strength or weapon stat, or by the number of levels you have. If you perform well in combat, you'll deal up to double damage, so you have to make every hit count. And since each of the game's 31 weapons has a unique animation, they'll each have a unique timing window to perform timed hits. Furthermore, each weapon has a hidden weapon coefficient that adds some randomness to the final damage value. The Lazy Shell, often considered the best weapon in the game, will sometimes deal amazing damage while other times falling flat. This is because the Lazy Shell's damage calculation has the highest randomness coefficient of any weapon. For example, if Mario has 100 attack power, the damage the Lazy Shell can do is equal to 100 for Mario's attack power, plus 90 for the Lazy Shell's power, plus a random number between negative 40 and 40 added for randomness, enemy defenses are subtracted from this sum, finally, the result is multiplied by 1.5 or by 2 if you did a timed hit, or by 1 if you didn't do a timed hit. But it's not just physical attacks that can be timed. Magic follows its own special rules for timed hits, and these rules are much more complex and varied. For example, Mario's Ultra Jump can be timed to chain jumps indefinitely, but for each jump you can successfully chain, the timing gets tighter and tighter until you have precisely two frames, or 1 30th of a second, to nail a jump. If you're really great at this, you can defeat some bosses in a single Ultra Jump. And if you can imagine 100 consecutive Super Jumps, you'll unlock the best armor in the game, but suffice it to say the majority of players, myself included, will forego the attempt, because geez, it's hard. You might think that weaker spells become obsolete as you level, but this isn't always true. Mario's starting special attack, Jump, costs only 3 FP, this game's version of magic points, but for every two uses, one point of magic power is permanently added to the attack. The observant player may notice this trend and capitalize on Jump's behavior. This means that Mario's starting spell and his signature move can become the strongest special attack in the game, 
reaching a maximum of 150 magic power. For comparison, the next highest magic power spell in the game is Ultra Jump at 65. Neither Super Jump nor Ultra Jump benefit from this hidden modifier, and likewise, both of these abilities have their own unique benefits over Jump. There is very little true obsolescence here, which prevents the feeling of just walking on a stats treadmill to keep up with enemy power. Most of Bowser's magic attacks require the player to rotate the D-pad, which is heck on your fingers, but can add four full rotations worth of damage to a spell. Timed hits also affect healing spells, like Toadstool's Group Hug, which means that a well-timed heal can mean the difference between victory and defeat. If you use Toadstool's Revival spell, Come Back, without timing, the target character will revive with less than full HP. However, correctly time the spell, and the character will be fully healed. The implication here is that if you're awesome at timed hits, you might just let Mallow die so that you can resurrect him next turn with full HP. I mean, he's not really pulling his weight here, you know what I'm saying? Geno Whirl, a level 11 spell, has a special override in its calculation. There's no in-game indication that this attack can be timed, but if you do correctly time it, any non-boss enemy will instantly take 9,999 damage and be KO'd. If you miss the timing, you'll do an unimpressive amount of damage for the higher FP cost, which might just clue you in that the ability's timing even exists. Now so far we've only talked about timed hits with regard to your attacks, but enemy attacks can also be blocked with correct timing. A correctly timed, but not perfectly timed block will result in taking half damage. That's where it gets really interesting though. If you do perfectly time your block, you'll reduce the damage of any blockable attack to zero. In other words, if you perform well in battle, you can negate all blockable attacks. Even if you're underleveled, even if you're fighting Culex, even if you're on the verge of death, you still have the power to pull through by skillful blocking. Think about the tension you'll feel watching an enemy wind up for a potentially lethal attack. If Mario is going to die from the next hit, your eyes are going to be glued to the screen. Succeed, and you'll survive another round and have a chance to heal up. This is especially true in the earlier sections of the game, where your HP pool is relatively low and you can be defeated by just two or three unblocked attacks. This is crucial in showing the player that learning how to block hits is going to be a really important recurring mechanic. Note that this doesn't count for spells like Flame Wall, and certain physical attacks cannot be blocked, which kind of makes sense. I mean, you can block a punch, but not a wall of fire, so yeah. You can also choose to defend during your turn, which will somewhat reduce incoming damage, but if you defend and also correctly time a block, your incoming damage is even more significantly reduced. Most of the time, you'll opt not to defend though, since you're going to miss some of the opportunities you have to attack, and there's a really good chance you can mitigate some of that damage anyway by skillful blocking. Consider the effect of timed hits on the flow of combat. In other RPGs, you might tell your characters to fight, then you sit back while the animation plays out. If the enemy attacks you, you again just sit back and watch while the numbers tick up or down. In Mario RPG, your fingers must always be ready to correctly time your own attacks, as well as defend from enemy attacks. However, if you need some time to think, Mario RPG gives you as much time as you need, because action is halted while you take your turn. Amazingly, Time hits don't completely unseat the game's balance. If you're good with time hits, you'll certainly do better, and because each weapon and spell has a unique timing, you'll naturally be better at some than others. In fact, we said above that timed hits deal double damage, but you can look at it from a different point of view. A non-timed hit deals only half damage, while a successfully timed attack will deal normal damage. There's no point in ignoring timed hits, so encounters are tuned upwards towards frequent successful timed hits and blocks. Imagine if you could summon Knights of the Round in Final Fantasy VII and increase your damage by timing the button presses for each attack. Final Fantasy VIII actually included a very simple timed hits mechanic, but only for Squall, the game's main character, and only for his physical attacks on the enemy. Timed hits do an excellent job of reinforcing the flow of combat. You'll notice very quickly how effective timed hits are, and you'll look forward to every fight as a chance to get better. You'll discover that every animation matters, whether attacking, casting a spell, or defending, and every animation is a puzzle challenging you to solve it. In my opinion, timed hits are the single most important factor in keeping battles fresh, fun, and exciting all the way to the end. Instead of each enemy just being a pile of numbers and stats, there's now a tangible difference between enemy types and their attacks. Instead of a weapon upgrade just being a slightly higher number, it's now a new combat challenge for you to master, and each new enemy provides a new chance for you to practice. I guess all I'm trying to say is that timed hits provide interactivity that most RPGs with turn-based battle systems don't attempt to provide. And because the system is fully fleshed out and unique for every weapon and attack, the flow of combat is constantly refreshed as you encounter new scenarios. Super Mario RPG does away with a lot of the traditional mundanities of RPGs. Magic points, called FP for flower points, are now shared by the entire party. Essentially, the only important stat to track moment to moment are your character's HP, rather than having each character use a separate magic pool. 
While it's objectively less complex than having a dedicated MP pool per character, it does force the player to carefully choose which spells they use. If you blow through your FP on fireballs and jumps, you might not have enough next turn to heal at a critical moment. Luckily, items that restore FP are plentiful, so the only downside to using lots of magic is that one character will have to sacrifice a turn to use an item to restore your FP. I usually make it Mallow because, eh, you know, he's not really pulling his weight around here. The battle interface is fantastically streamlined, and by and large, menus are gone and replaced by four different nodes that correspond to the SNES face buttons. The X button will always bring up items, the A button will always prepare a physical attack, and so on. Battle controls never get more complex than this, and the turn-based combat lets you carefully choose your actions in every fight. The HUD is understated and really helps the battle environments shine. In a game where you need to nail your timing a few times per combat round, it really helps to avoid distractions on the HUD. Not to mention these battle environments are beautiful. I want to mention the shell minigame that sometimes occurs after battles. If you manage to spawn a lucky flower after defeating an enemy, you can choose to go double or nothing with your experience points and gold. Maybe it's just me, but I've never been able to track these shells with my eyes, they're just so freaking fast. But statistically, it's always to your benefit to attempt it. 66% of the time, you'll either break even or double your rewards, while only 33% of the time you'll lose. We'll talk more about minigames in a future installment of this analysis. But besides the lucky flower, there are flowers which will instantly heal you, give you an immediate free turn, or temporarily boost your attack or defense. Lastly, I want to touch on RNG, randomness. By and large, Super Mario RPG's battle mechanics incorporate randomness in all the right ways. It's usually really difficult to use randomness in a way that doesn't feel cheap or aggravating to the player because it requires balancing to account for almost every possible scenario. Furthermore, randomness in Mario RPG is almost always either beneficial or neutral, and never just malicious. An example of neutral randomness is that each attack can randomly subtract X damage during its calculation, but this is balanced by an equal chance to add that same amount of damage to the final number. The majority of each attack's damage is still determined by your ability to time and block hits, though. An example of only beneficial randomness is that there is also a random chance that any item used in battle will not be consumed upon use, indicated by the message, get a freebie. Again, this is only beneficial, so you're happy when it happens, but not sad when it doesn't. Check out our analysis on randomness in games for more information about why using randomness skillfully is not always as easy as it looks. I hope you enjoyed this overview of Super Mario RPG's battle mechanics. The next few installments in the analysis will cover level design, storytelling, and minigames. As always, thank you for your continued support of GameSoup.